Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will explore how to create a material master in SAP Aswahana using GUI. So we navigate to transaction code MM01. Hit on enter. We are forwarded to the start screen to create our new material. First of all, you can see here a field for the material number. We can either fill this field manually or we can derive the number by the system. This depends on the material type. For now, let me just include a number over here. Then we have the industry. So the industry this material belongs to. For now, we will say plant engineering construction. And this will decide about the screens that we can fill in a second. And also if there are industry specific views, so to say. Then we have the material type. Let me just type in ROH for raw materials. This material type will determine many parameters, amongst others, also the material number. Then we could insert a change number to uniquely identify changes made to this material. And we could say we want to copy this material from another material so that the new material obtains all the information of an already existing one. For now, we will leave it as is. Then we click on views and here we select the different views. Our material should be created. For now, I will say basic data one and two, classification as well as our sales tax and purchasing. I will show you the MRP areas. Let's scroll down a bit plant data, quality management, as well as accounting and costing information. The others are rather special topics. Then we click on org levels. We must provide our plant, storage location, as well as sales organization and distribution channel and an MRP profile, which is relevant for our materials requirement planning. Then I click on continue. So far, so good. We are in the basic data one section. We must provide a description. Let's say raw material test for now. Then we must insert a base unit of measure. So the unit our material is measured in, let's just say pieces and also a material group. So a material group, as the name suggests, groups similar materials together. Okay, before we go further down, please be aware of this button over here. Go to additional data because over here we can fill the description of our material in different languages. This is one of the most common mistakes when you log on in a different language and the system tells you that the material does not exist. This is exactly because it was not maintained in different languages. Let's go back to the main data for now. We can provide information about an old material number so we can store any alphanumeric number over here. And this is relevant mostly if we migrate this material from another system to our system so that we can easily identify for our material. So for instance, if a sales organization would sell food and also non-food products through different pipelines, so retail and also wholesale distribution channels, then via this division, each of the distribution channels could be further split into a food and a non-food division, for instance. Then quite important, we have a cross plant material indicator saying that this material could be used across different plants in our organization. And then we can define a validity for this cross plant material. So far, so good. Let's scroll down a bit. We can also restrict the usage of our material by an authorization group so that only certain people with certain so-called user roles can use this material. By the way, I have another video explaining you more about the user roles. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. We can provide some dimensions, so weight information, volume information, and so on, which is also relevant to decide where to store our material, depending on its measurements. We have some packaging information. So with this material group packaging material indicator, we could mark different materials so that we tell the system that they require a similar packaging. And that's basically it. Now we can click on basic data two, or we can hit on enter on our keyboard which will automatically forward us to the next tab where we can include, amongst others, a dangerous goods indicator profile that we can mark this material as a dangerous good for different occasions, so to say. Let's close this one now. We can also say that this material is in bulk liquid or highly viscous. If we go further down, we can include some other data like the industry specific description of this material in accordance with a specific industry standard to easily identify this material. Those here are some more advanced topics. Then we have our environment section where we can include amongst others a dangerous goods indicator profile so that we can identify this material as a dangerous good. We can also say that this material is environmentally relevant. We could assign a so-called segmentation strategy to this material. And this segmentation strategy is a collection of business rules defining which stock materials should satisfy which demand objects. If we go further down, we can include some design information for this material. Also, in the client-specific configuration, we can mark this material 
as a configurable material. This is quite important because if we mark this material as a configurable one, then we can assign a variant class to the material. So for instance, imagine you are a company producing different t-shirts and you could have a product line of the same t-shirt with different colors. And in this case, you would create one master record, so to say, with a white t-shirt. And then you would make this master record configurable so that you can create the same t-shirts in different colors. Okay, further down we have some Brazil relevant information and we can assign product groups if necessary. Let's hit on enter again. We must choose a so-called class type for our material, which is another way of classifying our material so that we can find it more easily later on. Let's just say material class, then we can assign here classification and then we click on next screen. Now we are in the sales information section. You can see over here we have some information like the base unit of measure and material group copied. We can include a sales unit, so the unit of measure in which our material is sold in the end. Let's say square meter, just as an example. We can also, quite importantly, include the delivering plant, so the plant from which the goods should be delivered to the customer. And if we fill this, then the plant is automatically copied into the sales order as a default value. So this saves us some time when we know that we will always sell this material from a specific plant. Quite important is also this indicator called cash discount. And if we hit this indicator, then this material qualifies for a cash discount. So a reduction of the invoice costs charged to our customer if our customer settles the invoice in a specific time. So far so good. Let's scroll down a bit. We can include the text data for our material. So this is used to determine the output text for the material when processing sales and also distribution specific documents. Let's inspect the search help. Here you can see the different taxes that we could assign to this material. We will say full text as well. Further down, we have quantity stipulations, amongst others, quite importantly, a minimum quantity. So here we could insert, for instance, that our customer must at least order five pieces of this material, otherwise we won't sell it. And also the minimum quantity needed to deliver this material to our customer. Before we hit on enter, let's scroll up a bit and click on conditions. Over here, we must provide our sales conditions. So scale quantity, let's say one, and the amount is 100 euro. Then let's go back and click on sales organization two. Here we can state some grouping terms. So at least we must provide the so-called item category group, which is used to group materials or products that our system uses to determine the item categories during the processing of our sales documents. Those item categories define certain characteristics and they control the pricing, the billing, the delivery, as well as inventory postings. So let's choose one. We will just say make to order for now and this is fine. We can provide more grouping terms here for the sales relevant data if necessary, but for now we will go down. As you can see, we can assign different material groups and also product attributes. Let's now click on sales general data plant. Here we can include gross and net weight information, which is relevant for our materials requirement planning, specifying whether and also how the system checks the availability and generates the requirements for our materials planning. We can mark here that our material is relevant for batch management. So those batches are a subset of a material in our stock managed separately from other subsets of the same material. An example example of a batch would be different product lots. There could be a batch for paints, for dyes, and also for pharmaceutical products. Good, let's go down. We have a section for the shipping data. So for instance, we can include here the setup time, which is the time normally needed in shipping to set up our work centers where the material is processed. So for instance, setting up a forklift that loads the material onto a truck and also the shipping process time. So the time normally needed in shipping to process a specific quantity of the material, meaning that the time loading our material on a truck that transports the material to our customer. Then we have here some packaging information relevant for sales and also we can assign, quite importantly, our material to a profit center. If you want to find out more about profit centers, I have many videos about the topic. I will leave you a link to my playlist in the description of this video. So far so good. If I now hit on enter, we will skip those two. As you can see, they are not marked with this symbol over here only the ones with the symbol we need to fill for now. And I selected them in the start screen, as you've seen before. Let's hit on enter. We are forwarded to the sales text. We can maintain here different sales text if necessary, but for now this is fine. Let's hit on enter. Let's just say test. 
then hit on enter and then we click on purchasing. This is also quite an important screen. For instance, we can say that automatic purchase orders are allowed for this material, meaning that if this material is included in a purchasing requisition, then this purchasing requisition can be directly converted to a purchase order if this indicator is hit. I also have a separate video about that. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. Let's go further down. You can see we can provide here a purchasing value key, which determines the reminder days and also the tolerance limits valid, as well as the shipping instructions and also the order acknowledgement requirement of our material for the purchasing. For now, we'll leave it as is. Then we have the other data or manufacturing data where we can include the goods received processing time as well in days. This is the time the material needs up until it's stored in our warehouse. Let's click on purchase order text where we can provide more texts if necessary. And then we have the MRP data. Data. So this MRP data is used to define the materials requirement planning for this material. And most importantly is here the MRP type. Let's say no planning for now, but if we select something deviating to no planning, then this material will be subject to the so-called MRP run, determining how many units of this material we need to reorder. There's also, as you can see, a reorder point so that the stock should never be below this specific number here. We can provide some lot size information and also the MRP areas. Let's click on MRP2. Here, amongst others, we can set this material as a special procurement one. So this is relevant if we have a consignment process or a subcontracting process, for instance. I have also videos about that. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. But for now, just keep in mind that there are different ways of procuring a material. So for instance, you could also drop ship the material. I'm sure you've heard of drop shipping before and there are many more ways. And we can define this material to be relevant for those processes. Okay, further down, we can also include a planned delivery time. So the time it normally takes up until this material arrives at our plant and we can define certain safety stocks. So a stock that we need at minimum if there's an unexpected high demand for this material. Let's click on MRP. Three. Over here, we can set some forecasting requirement information as well as planning information for this material. Also quite importantly over here, if this material was defined as a configurable one, we can specify more parameters for the variant configuration. Let's click on MRP4. Here amongst others, we can select the component scrap in percent. So the normal percentage of scrap that occurs during the production of the material, if this material is a component of another material. So for instance, if the required material quantity is 200 pieces and the component scrap is set to 10%, then this means that 20 pieces of those 200 pieces will be the scrap quantity. And this then therefore means that if we require 200 pieces of this material, we must order 220 because we already know that 20 pieces will be scrap. Okay, let's go down. Then there is some special information for discontinued parts and also for repetitive manufacturing. But those are more advanced topics. Let's click on plant storage one. This is the storage location data. So we can provide amongst others a storage bin, which is only relevant if we use the ZAP warehouse management solution and is so to say the smallest addressable unit of space in a warehouse, also called a slot. Let's scroll down a bit. We can also include the batch management if necessary. And then we have shelf life information. So information, if our material could lose its quality over a certain period of time, then we can store here this information to define the longest amount of time this material could be stored. There's also some advanced shelf life data and that's basically it. Let's now click on plant data storage too. Here we can include more weight and volume information and also whether for instance, negative stocks are allowed in the plant. A negative stock is a temporary situation when a material is physically available in the stock, but the relevant goods receipts have not been made. Let's click on quality management. Here we can provide some quality information. So for instance, quite importantly, once we receive this material, if we mark it as post to inspection stock, then this means that we can't store this material directly, but it will be subject to an inspection to investigate the quality first. Further down, we have some more procurement data relevant to the quality management. Then quite importantly, we have the accounting section it is used for the evaluation of our material. You can see we provide here evaluation class for the determination of our general ledger accounts. By the way, I have a separate video about that. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. The same also counts for the material ledger information you can set over here. This I have already explained to you in another session. Further down, we have the price control. So right now it's set to S, but this depends on the material ledger configuration. We will include the standard price 
And that's basically it. On accounting two, we can mark, for instance, that this material is LIFO FIFO relevant. And then on the costing section, we can say that this material should be costed with or without a quantity structure. So this is data relevant for our controlling. In the costing two section, we can provide plant prices, also relevant for our managerial accounting. And further down, the information from our accounting section is copied. Okay. Now we can click on save and you can see the material was created successfully. That's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.